No, he doesn't. Why? Because he didn't fulfill that condition. It's not just about seeing the Prophet ﷺ, but actually being alive during that time. And there was actually some companions uh, that were blind at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, but they could hear the Prophet ﷺ. They interacted with the Prophet ﷺ, and that made them companions. <coughs> And like we said, this issue of companions of the Prophet ﷺ, the reason why we keep mentioning it again and again and you know, really emphasizing it is because it is an issue that other people do not agree with the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So this makes it even more important that the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah are very firm that anyone that has been declared and known to us to be a companion of the Prophet we have to hold our tongues. We have to hold our tongues. We do not mention any of the companions by anything other than good. We don't talk bad about them. We don't try to belittle any of the, any of the companions of the Prophet And this is actually a part of Iman. It is part of Iman. Anyone that talks bad about the companions of the Prophet that would, some scholars would say this is a sign of nifaq, it is a sign of hypocrisy. And it is, uh, by some standard, some would even say it takes a person outside the fold of Islam. If you try to belittle or talk bad about a companion of the Prophet it shows that you have hatred in your heart for the Prophet and Islam. Now, moving on, the Hijrah, that first Hijrah that took place, as we mentioned before, is the Hijrah to Habasha, uh, Abyssinia, or what is today known as Ethiopia. And the Prophet once the situation got so difficult for some of the companions, the Prophet gave them permission to leave Mecca and to settle down in, in Habasha until further notice, until something might have changed. Now, the early companions, that group, there weren't that many people. Uh, some narration mentioned that there were 12 men and 4 women. 12 men and 4 women that went to Habasha and the only reason why they chose Habasha was because there was, uh, the Prophet wasallam knew that there was a king there, Najashi, uh, and he was a very just king. He was a just ruler. And the Prophet wasallam mentioned that to some of his companions. At that time, Najashi, that ruler, was not Muslim. He was not Muslim. And some of the scholars in Islam, they say, this shows us, it gives us an example in that it is permissible for a Muslim to mention a good trait in a non-Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said about Najashi, talking to his companions, go to that land, there is a king that is just. Some Muslims, they think that just by mentioning a quality in a person, especially a non-Muslim, that the person is praising non-Muslims. But that's not the case. As long as the person mentions something that is actually found in the person and saying this person is just, he does not wrong anyone to the best of his ability, this is what the Prophet ﷺ said about Najashi. Uh, and actually, the, one of the companions that went to Habasha at that time was no other than Uthman bin Affan. Uthman bin Affan, he has that virtue that he uh, completed both the hijras, hijratain, the hijra to Habasha and the hijra to Medina later on. And these companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they remained in that place uh, for uh, until uh, later on we find that they actually came back to Mecca under false uh, information. They had been told something that was not true and some of them Kate ended up coming back. <coughs> and 
there's a whole chapter on this page line to Habasha, and I, I want to delay this chapter because it has a lot of fawaid, a lot of lessons and benefits that uh, need to be discussed in great detail, and inshallah, we will do so uh, tomorrow. Uh, so today's class will end here. However, this is important. I want to give the opportunity to ask questions not you asking questions, but me asking you questions and inshallah, hopefully the person that gets it right will get uh, a small uh, hadiyah, a small reward, a gift uh, so inshallah, I hope you guys are ready Tell me, this is a, inshallah, hopefully a simple question. Who can tell me the name, the reason, and the name, or the name and the reason for uh, the name of the uh, grandfather of the Prophet? Why was he called what he, he was called, and what was his name? So first tell me his name and then tell me why he was called that. It's a little bit uh, of a trick question. You know what? Remember? Was it like Abdul Muttalib? Abdul Muttalib, yes, correct. Because he was a slave of Muttalib, but that was an example. Yes, uh, but the question is, well, was he really a slave of uh, Al Muttalib? No, he was his son. Oh, well, he wasn't his son, but it was his Hey, poopy, Baba! But he is dad, 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 Baba! very good, you remember the story. Please come up and get your gift. This is a CD of Quran. Inshallah, you will put it in good use. Okay. A bit more simpler question. So the answer to that question was that his name is Abdul Muttalib and the reason was that Al Muttalib, who was his uncle, went to Medina to bring back his nephew and when the people saw him walking with Al Muttalib, they started saying that this is Ghulam Al Muttalib, this is the slave of Muttalib and people just kept saying that even though Al Muttalib made it clear saying to them that this is not my slave, this is my nephew. But the name stuck with him and he was known as Amp al muqadim Another question. What was the name of the mother of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Sorry? Amina, mashallah. Very good. Come up and get it, please. Remember your right hand. Um, okay. Another question. The Prophet وسلم, when he or well, actually who can tell me the name of the tribe uh, that settled down in Mecca at the time of Ibrahim and Ismail, and specifically the family of Hajar and Ismail in Mecca. Remember in the very, very beginning of the class, we, we mentioned the name, there was a name of a tribe. How's that one? It's a little bit too detailed. Sorry? Close to it, very close. Yes. Very good, inshallah. The Abu 
Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu is the best of companions, that is what the Muslims have agreed upon. When Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu became a Muslim, he became very active and he started recruiting, spreading the message of Islam to others. And he ended up recruiting some of the very well-known and high-level companions. Can you tell me any of those people that accepted Islam uh, through uh, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu? Imam That's yeah, that's very good, mashallah. You only get one chance to uh, other people. Anyone else? Names of great companions that accepted Islam through Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Bilal is very close. Bilal didn't accept Islam through Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, but he was certainly uh, uh, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was the one that freed him. He bought him and then he freed him for the sake of Allah. That is a, it's a good answer. Yes. Abdurrahman ibn Hawq. Abdurrahman ibn Hawq. Very close, good. I think you mean Abdul Rahman bin Auf, right? Good, mashallah. Yes. Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu didn't accept Islam through Abu Bakr as siddiq but definitely he was one of the uh, high level companions. Actually, the Muslims say he was the one after Abu Bakr as siddiq radiallahu anhu. So inshallah, uh, we'll conclude here for today. Tomorrow we'll have uh, even more questions. Uh, so please try to review uh, the information. And uh, if you have any more suggestions of how we can make the class more interactive, and uh, you know, this that you see, alhamdulillah, is through the uh, blessings of Allah and is through the ideas and suggestions of people like you yourself, people in the community that approached me and said, Shir, you know, let's try this. Maybe people will find it beneficial. So please, if you have any suggestions, uh, approach me.